I married a person who was diagnosed as a sociopath. He was diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. I didn't know what any of this meant and I wasn't listening to it. I went through this whole divorce and you know, just didn't know what I was doing and made, made every mistake in the book and was essentially, when it was all over, I was completely destitute. I had lost every single thing. I tell the stories of my early dating experiences and all of that. You'll find all of those stories here. Okay, let's get started. Let me ask a little truth. I'd like to know your point of view. Quite a few years later at this point, I found a way to rebuild my life and I actually even was able to buy a home back in the same neighborhood where we had been before my divorce even started, before my husband left me, that same neighborhood. It was a, a modest home, but I was so proud of this house. I just, you know, it was a home, it was, we had a home again. It was a home for me and my boys and I just couldn't believe I did it. It was just so, I was so incredibly proud that I had this place and that I was, I was, secure and stable again. This was, you know, very, very important and meaningful to me. Eventually, I started dating my current husband, my now husband, and then eventually we were, we were going to get married. So when we got married and moved into a house that we had together, I was going to you know, rent my house out. So I was, but I was very, very picky about who I wanted in this house. And I was leaving it partially furnished and I just, I wanted to, you know, get someone who was really really appreciated the house so this woman contacted me basically just said i know your boys my daughters go to school with your boys and i'm going through a really nasty divorce and i just i love your house and i would just it's the right neighborhood and all this kind of stuff and i just would love your house so much and i just wanted to know if you'd rent to me and the only problem is, is that I do have a little dog. It's a really old dog. She's no problem at all. I'll take really good care of everything. I over-empathized with her because I definitely have this soft spot for anyone that's going through this nasty divorce. Immediately my heart went out because no one helped me. I mean, I needed someone to like give me a helping hand along the way and it was, I completely over-empathized with her and projected onto her that she was in my shoes. Also the fact that she said she had two girls that were to school with my two boys and that kind of hit me and and the fact that if you were from that town you would know this neighborhood you would appreciate this neighborhood and, and so I felt like she had some appreciation for the kind of house it was and and all that and I would have felt exactly the same way she did I would have felt like oh I just love the house and please so anyway so I said yes I, I, I let her move in and I let her bring her dog no, I don't know exactly why this happened this way but we still have the electricity turned on we never shut it off and so we just told her, we'll keep it on, uh, but you just need to shift it over into your name. Well, she never did that, of course. So we're getting, we're getting these really high electricity bills and they're in our name. And she's not, she's not switching it over, she's not doing this. It didn't take long. I don't think it was too terribly long before she stopped paying the rent. I had an assistant at the time and he would go by, because we had a lot of different things going on at that time. So I had this assistant and I just kind of sent him down there to, to go check on it, check on things. And so he would do that every now and then. And he said when he was at the house, people were coming, coming up and asking him where she was and all this stuff because she was, what she did for a job was take pictures. She was a photographer. She'd take like sports teams pictures and wedding pictures and that kind of thing. And people were coming up and saying, listen, these are my wedding photos. Where are they? You know, and that kind of stuff. Plus it looked to him like there were legal documents showing up at the door, like, like she was getting sued or there were people pursuing her in legal case. Finally, he's there one time and he says, she's gone. She's left. She's clearly vacated the place and she's left. What she did, she took furniture that was mine. She took that with her. And this is the biggest thing. The house was absolutely trashed. The house was just trashed. There was dog poop and pee in the house. There was every piece of furniture that she didn't take was trashed. I mean, she went to town trashing this house but it gets worse. She sends me an email. She uses my maiden name. She goes, listen, Erin Paget, I know who you are. And I'm thinking, you, what does that mean, you know who I am? I'm, you know, my maiden name, what do you mean? And what are you mad at me about? Like, why are you mad at me? 
basically what kind of starts coming out is that she's involved with my brother somehow. My brother was married. Of course, I'm estranged from my family. And that goes back to when the whole discard and all that stuff happened and they got involved in my divorce and a lot of feature, you know, a lot of shady stuff that they did. So anyway, so we're estranged. But this woman is basically telling telling me that she had some kind of affair with my brother. This is not who I believe my brother to be. And this woman is a terrible person. She's a complete garbage person. His wife, my brother's current wife, was pretty abusive to me too. She wasn't certain. She wasn't certainly a, a great person, but I certainly wouldn't think he would jump from the frying pan into the fire with this other woman who was, you know, a complete, you know, obviously not a great person. Oh, also the other thing was I started hearing all these things about the kids. All these things that the kids were like. And I started hearing all these things about her and all this crazy wild money she was spending, how she went to, uh, you know, bought these limousines and all this stuff for her kids' graduation parties and her kids' prom dances and all these different things that she was doing. All the neighbors were, you know, commenting on the kind of shady stuff she was doing and how they were really noticing that she was doing things that were strange and they did, they just were not liking what they were, what was happening with her. We figured out one of the reasons why the electricity bill was so high was because she had moved a hot tub into the backyard and she was sitting in this hot tub, you know, having this hot tub run day and night and leaving and letting us pay the electricity bill. So I contacted my brother. I sent him this little email said, heads up, I don't know what your relationship is with this person, but I, I should tell you that she's pretty openly sharing that you guys have had some kind of affair. And I don't believe it's true. I'm thinking, that she maybe has a crush on him or, or something like that. Can't believe that he would be involved with this person. Then my son, Noah, he goes, oh, he said he saw his uncle leaving my house and at one time. So he's putting that together. Oh, so I start figuring out that this woman was in my house, trashing my house, not paying the rent. And at the same time, she was there with my brother. My brother was there with her while she was trashing my house and not paying the rent and all of that and clearly had a problem with me. So obviously my brother was talking badly about me and this was fine with him that he would sit there and you know basically help her trash my house and you know, send me the electricity bills and not pay the rent and all that. Clearly, he was approving of her and all and doing all this, and maybe even it was a way she was, you know, getting on his good side by doing it by hating me and treating me so badly herself. You know, this woman has never met me. She's never met me. All she's done is talk to me on the phone, ask me for something, and have me be this very empathic person that did something nice for her. And this is how she repays me and feels perfectly fine about it. And it was just all kind of blowing me out of the water. Well, he gets a divorce. And he's still with this woman. And one day, just by happenstance, I find out that they got married. My brother married that person. And I see it online, you know, there at the wedding with my parents there and the whole thing with this person who had trashed my house, cost me bunches of money and not paid the rent. And she was, it just was so striking that as we go on in time, you know, I've been estranged from my brother all these years. And now this is, this, somehow this makes sense to him that this is what he should do and that this is the kind of person he would be with and that his wife would be this kind of person that would do this to his sister. And it's not only her because his first wife, he obviously got on board with her abusing me as well. And so whatever the story is, because I know that, I know that my brother believes he's a really a good guy. And so whatever the story is, it is, it's justifying him or somehow this is justified in what he's doing and I deserve this and, and he's still the, I'm, I'm still the perpetrator of, I'm still the problem. That's how narcissist families work. And so anyway, so here he has clearly involved himself with another narcissistic person, another person who is completely self-absorbed, vindictive, quick to lash out and you know those kinds of things and those kinds of people love conflict my brother is someone who swears he doesn't love conflict what i see that he does is he is kind of an inverted narcissist he pairs himself up with people that will do his will work out his resentments for him Let me ask a little truth. 
I'd like to know your point of view.